All right, guys, today we're going to look at something a little bit different. This is actually a trade that appeared or we actually executed during the six week program. So as I'm sure many of you know, we run a six week program four times a year. This is the one that we're currently doing. So this is the 3rd of September. We actually had at the start of the session a comment from Libya suggesting that they would increase their oil output. Now, the trade on this is a sell more oil great supply of oil prices drops pretty straightforward what we got to do then is actually go and trade this and what i'm going to show you is a bit of a clip of that the way that i looked at executing the trade the considerations in it i think that's the real key bit it's the considerations of what's going on where you're trying to take your trade to and what information incoming is going to help you take that trade on so check it out here's the video oil at the moment what we have just had is at least on Twitter, and this is a good point on news as well, rumors that Libya will be restarting or increasing oil output. We had the oil rumors the other day, which created this move straight on the open. We're now getting these Libya rumors just now, currently on Twitter, not as far as I've seen on any of the major news wires, but this gives an opportunity. Oil has dropped around about 100 or so ticks. The last few minutes but crucially and this is the thing with any kind of news this has now created quite an interesting technical situation oil's been in that very big um, wedge for quite some time having broken the wedge on this news you've also fallen into this little range down here around 94 area my view is if you can come out the bottom of the range through 59 then this low is almost inevitably going to break if that low breaks you're then looking down here towards <clears throat> well, it's virtually the same low and then 71 double O. So that would be my sort of main expectations of the trade here. Now, in terms of how you actually approach this from here as a trade, the question has got to be, and this is always the case of any kind of trade, what are you trying to get out of it? How far do you, are you willing to hold this? So if you got in on the pullback, which is roughly the position we've got up here, getting in on this pullback as it starts to come off, you've then got to ask yourself, if I'm going for the big one, the 71 double O, do I need to worry too much about the order flow here? The answer to which is no. Don't get too wrapped up in it because ultimately you're not wrong on this until you're back above the recent high, so 72.11. So if you want to take the 100 tick winner, you also at this point got to be willing to accept a 40 tick pullback on you. If you're going for the short term move, this has to a degree slowed down and you're waiting now for the next bit of information. What's going to be very interesting is hopefully this does show it. I'm looking at this 5960 area. Now you've got a large order sitting down there. I think there might have been a bit of news there. That strikes me as a, some kind of comment there. So you got that very quick rip back up off the low. It's not actually showing on my chart. Very, very quick little whiz off the low. That could have been profit taking. It could have been a comment. But that's always a good sign to go, okay, well, perhaps just let's cut this down a little bit here. Don't want to get out of everything. You want to find out if there's more to it. But we have actually then, after that little flick up, gone straight the way back down. This order here is quite key. Dependent upon how we hit this is going to give you a bit of information about what's the next thing that's coming. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm watching for is the way it goes down and trades here. Ideally, what you want it to do is trade down and then quite cleanly hit it. You don't want it to trade down and trade a one lot. Because if it does that and it trades one and then it goes tick, tick, tick back up, a lot of other people are going to be aware of the level at 59 they're going to be aware that they're already short. Some of them will have been short from somewhere up here as well. So they've been short for 100 ticks or so. They may well come to take profit. So what you want to see is when it gets down here and you keep seeing it slows down in the mid 60s, it needs to pick up a bit of pace, in which case you can then sell into the 60. Don't wait for it. As long as it's got a bit of pace, you can sell into it. What you don't want to see is it dribble towards it. So there we go, that's gone straight through it. Approach now, and you see you can't get, okay, you get filled on it. 
Very, very quick. People clearly want to sell it now. I'd be quite surprised if it doesn't get to the 46s. <coughs> what you've also got, if you are short here from an order flow perspective, you've got this little pocket of volume. That gave you a perfect example of where these come from. That acceleration through the low is why you've got light volume here. That order got filled, it was about 100, it's traded nearly 100 there. As long as this stays low volume here, it's all looking good. And that's your protection. You've now got another 100 down here. Same principle. As long as it comes down and hits this quite quick, you should view this not as a place for the market to stop, but as a kind of stall point. It's just creating a little bit of a reason to sort of take a take a little step back. You know, again, if, you're, if you've been short for a long, long time, you might be thinking, do you know what? I'll get out of 53. I'll just take that and be done with it. For me, I'm thinking if that the next big level is 46. So if that goes, you're then breaking the level. This could then accelerate even further as well. So again, it's worth, in my view, the risk here to say, if it comes back up here, fine, I'll give it up. But the upside of staying in here, to me, is worth it if it's going to go all the way for 71. So there we go, 46 is the next big level. Can it go through that? You see that it trades 46, it's not able to bounce off it just at the minute, but you want to see a little bit more pace. Again, thinking about how far this has come, this is, you know, this is the point where it should really start to accelerate. If it doesn't, this is then the bit where you have to step back and go, okay, maybe that is it. You've reached a pretty significant level over the last three, four weeks. If it can't sustain below here, maybe you do have to give this one up. But at the moment, it's all looking good. If you want to be cautious with your stop and you want to be moving your stops down, then you get your stop up here. Now about 54, 55. But really what I'm looking for on a move like this is it for it to accelerate. <coughs> when I say accelerate, I'm talking super fast, just off the page. If it does that, then I think you're in a decent position. The level I got is down at 7106, I think it is. So you've got a bid down there. The, the idea of the bid down there, if it does do a quick flick down, you're gonna get out. The other thing I'm starting to see here as well is since 50, unlike the rest of the move, this has been quite sort of push, 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 push. We've not got too much volume trading down here. This is increasingly giving you an indication that possibly the move is coming towards an end. It's getting a bit stretched. But still, in terms of managing trade, every new minute candle that comes on is pretty much just open, tick, tick, tick down. So again, still able to kind of stay in it. Always have a target. Like I said, if my view is 71, then get your bids in. If it gets there and you get out, you can step back and go, I'm pleased with that. I'll take the 71. I don't want to really looking for too much more. That 100 as well could be a reason to to sort of take a little bit of a step back as well. That we're stalling down here, we've got through the level and it's not really driving on here. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's really a case of management of your position. Where are you really looking to try and get this down to at any point in time? And that can help them manage how far you're going to, or how far you're willing to let this pull back. But a lot of sort of order flow stuff is I don't need to be reading too much into everything that's going on. What I want to be trying to get a sense of is how exactly is it doing this move? What exactly is it really doing here? And it's following a reasonably similar pattern to what it was above, where it moves, it stalls, it trades, then it moves and it stalls down here. This slow type of steady action is not a problem. I think people often sort of see that and think, oh no, it's not looking good, it's slowed down. It doesn't have to keep telling you you're right. All it's got to do is not tell you you're wrong. You're not wrong here. If you're short and you're looking for 71, it's okay. It's all looking okay. The absence of fast, heavy selling is also matched by the absence of any particularly strong buying either. So it's just balancing out. It's taking a bit of a break, taking a bit of a breath down here, and that's fine. You can sit through, let it do that, and then wait for the next leg of the move. I know that some people, and there's almost everyone in the office hit this comment, there will be some people who are still in, and part of what they will do is they will trail behind that moving average. 
So their stop's still going to be in the 70s. And the idea then is they're going to hold this until the move is over. And that's a different approach to the way that they're going to do it. But it's all about you. how do you want to approach it? How are you going to sort of try and manage this trade here? But yeah, from my point of view, it's, it's steady, it's creeping down. It's not exactly doing it a convincing way, but it's also not doing it in a way that you should be overly worried about. So I've lost my oil chart. There you go. So I am sort of thinking, right, well, where's my next level? That was 46. The next level was 44. That was my 71. <clears throat> that thing you'd probably get down to. After that, it could do more. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it could do a fair bit more than that. But you've got to sort of ask yourself, how much more are you going for? If that was my plan initially, the initial idea behind the trade was in this range here, once you're in that range, that's the chance, that's your execution zone to get the break of this low. And if that low goes, we should trade down there. So that's the whole idea of it. This may go a lot further. And it could do much, much more. That's the bit where you have to be able to sort of confidently or comfortably step back and go, yeah, but this is what I wanted. This is where I was playing it to. So that's where I'm gonna where I'm gonna hold it down to. Rather than trying to <clears throat> extract the most by leaving a runner or it'd be overly cautious with it say right if, if i'm happy with 09 great i'll take that if we get there and be done with it again now that you've got this little pocket of low volume you can start to move your stops down if you want i'd look at that and say well if it comes up to around 30 i can give that one up call it a day on that be happy with it and you've you've achieved what you want Frustrating it's not done the 09s in one. The other approach to this is you yeah, there is an element, and this this is the discretionary side of trading, where you could say to yourself, well, if I'm looking for 09, it's trading 19, it's doing a lot of volume from here. If it's going to reverse, it can reverse from where the volume is. So you could say, well, do you know what? I'm quite happy to take 20 to be to be sure that you've got out of the trade. Now Theoretically, it's not what you should do. You should hold it to target. The problem, or the, the, re, the reason for saying maybe just give it up at 20, is that if it starts to reverse, as it seems to be doing now, and if you want to be quite bold on the reverse, you could actually play a long from 25 here, with your stop at, say, 16. So we'll have a, we'll have a very quick go at that one. <coughs> But you could play that as a quick reverse. The reason for doing that is the psychological downside of this, if it had just gone straight back up and you'd given up so much, is worth giving up to make sure that you extract everything that you want or nearly everything you want out of the trade. It is a balancing act. It's not necessarily the, you know, the, the cleanest of, of ways to approach these things. You have to kind of go, well, what am I willing to, to take or, or what am I willing to forego to make sure I'm definitely on this trade? One other point to make here as well, Delta is marginally ticking up. I wouldn't say it's ramping up, but it is marginally ticking up. Also, these are the first couple of green candles. So I'd be quite happy now to say, if you do want to sell this or you're short, probably needs a bit of a bounce before you're going to be able to sell again. What I wouldn't want to be doing is trying to, and particularly if you've just got out of a, of a decent position, what I don't want to be doing is now trying to jump back in, and this is what a ladder can be dangerous for. You look at this, you're like, oh no, but it's going again, I need to get back in. And then you, you, you constantly sort of being sucked into a move that is ultimately ongoing, and the thing with an ongoing move is this is the dangerous part. The bit where you initially got in would have been clearly planned out for whatever reason. You've thought it through, you've planned out why you're gonna do it, what you're gonna do, that's all good. The ongoing bit is the bit where everybody who's already in is now thinking, do I take my profit? Do I add to it? Do I just move my stop down? There's a lot of what I call essentially emotional trading. People doing stuff because of positions that they've got and the desire to keep hold of profit to try and get something more out of it. Don't get sucked into that. B 
be comfortable to say, yeah, I, I can leave this alone. If I, want to sell, if I want to sell this again, I need a pullback really, because this is pretty much straight lined. Markets don't go in absolute straight lines. Without a pullback, you are selling the low of what is now close on a 200 tick move, hoping to get what out of it. Maybe you'll get some more out of it, but for all you know, it could be a very, very short lived move. 3rd of September was a pretty decent day for us at Axia. Junior traders made over five figures, senior traders pushing six figures, all around a good day. Reason being, oil dropped on a Libya comment around them increasing their oil output. More supply of oil, prices fall. The additional lucky part of this was this happened just at the beginning of a session on our six week program. Now we run four six week programs a year. More info on those, click the link below.